What's going on everyone? I'm back here with another unboxing video and today I'm going to be unboxing the Sigma 70-200 f2.8 APO EX DGOS lens uh, for Nikon. <clears throat> um, I picked this up off of eBay for $850 with free shipping. Now, this lens runs for $1400 brand new. Let's go ahead and open it up and see what we got inside. So it looks like right away we have the original instruction manual that comes with the lens. Um, this is quite unexpected to be honest for a used lens. Most lenses on eBay do not come with the original packaging and instruction manuals. So this is something you don't see very often. And as you can see it even comes with all of the original packaging material. So it even came with the original box content. That's pretty cool. Um, so it does also come with the usual accessories. Uh, it comes with its case, uh, which the lens is inside the case. I'll get to that in just a second. So let me move that over here. And then lastly in the box, we have the uh, APS-C lens hood adapter. And what this is for is if you use a DX format camera, you need to get a, have to use this adapter to use the lens hood on the camera. So um, let me go ahead and take this out real quick, give you guys a look at that. Uh, okay, that's pretty cool. So it does appear to come with a strap for the bag, uh, the case as well. So that's nice to see there. And down in here we have the lens hood adapter. Get that out. So you can see this kind of just attaches to the lens and then the other end goes onto the lens hood. And then you can use this on an APS-C uh, format camera, which that's pretty nice that's included. Uh, now let's get on to the <coughs> uh, lens itself. Let's go ahead and get it out of the case. Uh, the case actually seems to be in pretty decent shape. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's any scratching on it. That's nice. Ooh, and it's got some really hard, tough uh, foam in there. So it's going to protect the lens quite nicely. So that's very, very good. So let's go ahead and get the lens out of here. Alright, so let's go ahead and the case off for just a side. Alright. Get the lens out of the plastic. Okay, so and it comes with the lens collar as well. So you can mount the lens and the camera onto a tripod easily. So that's good. Um, so then here is the uh, lens hood itself. It's quite a large lens hood, uh, being the fact that this is a large lens, of course. So you're going to need a pretty large sized hood for that. Um, but here is the lens itself. Um, it's relatively big, <laughs> so keep that in mind if you're wanting to uh, pick this lens up uh, because it is going to be quite hefty and it's not really going to be one that you're going to want to handhold and carry around. Um, and So it also does come with the front lens cap and the rear lens cap as well, so it comes with all the usual accessories, which is absolutely wonderful. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the front element. Um, it looks like, let's see, it doesn't look like there's really that much dust on it. There might be some dust on the outer uh, surface, but I'm not seeing really any dust on the inside. There may be a couple specks, uh, but that's nothing too major. The outside I can just wipe off, so that's really, really nice. Let's take a look at the back. And the back appears to be pretty good as well, so that's really nice. Let's go ahead and put this cap back on here. So, uh, let's go ahead and give a quick rundown of the lens itself. So, on the front, or top rather, I should say, um, you have the focusing uh, window, so you can see or uh, see the focusing distance uh, that you are at, which is really nice. And then we have the Sigma branding with the type of lens that you've got. Uh, and then we have the collar, uh, tripod collar which you can easily take off by twisting this little thing here, pulling on it, and there you go. The tripod collar has now been removed. So it's easily removable if you so choose to do that. <clears throat> uh, then you have a lot of little white dots so you can help line everything up and get it all good. Um, then on this side we have our switches uh, for autofocus and manual focus, and then the optical stabilization so you can turn it off mode one and mode two so the two different modes is actually uh, really nice to have so mode one 
uh, is for standard hand holding and or tripod um, usage. So you want to use mode one if you're going to be hand holding the camera and shooting a subject that is not moving. Um, mode two is for a subject that is moving in a horizontal path. Okay, so moving on, uh, we have the focusing uh, ring. It's got a little bit of resistance, but not too much. So it's going to let you get the precise focus that you need. Uh, and then onto the uh, zoom ring. Uh, it is also internally focusing and internally zoom. So there's no moving parts on the outside of the lens, which is incredibly useful. Uh, so you have 70 all the way over to 200. Um, now, if you use this on a DX camera body, uh, the 70 to 200 focal length will be uh, an equivalent of a 105 millimeter to a 300. So the focal length significantly increases um, by 1.5 times if you use that on a DX camera, which actually I am going to be using on a DX. Um, I'm going to be using this primarily with my D5500. <coughs> so now let's go ahead and take a look at the front again. It does take 77 millimeter thread for filters. Um, which is the standard size for pro grade lenses. And like I said, this is a f2.8 lens, so it is a fast lens and can be used in really low light situations. And it is also a fixed aperture lens, which that means that throughout the zooming of the focal length, so from 70 all the way to 200, the aperture does not change. Uh, it stays constant at that f2.8. Um, or whatever aperture you set it at. So if you want to set the aperture at f4 or 5.6 or something like that, uh, the aperture will not change uh, throughout the focal length, which is incredibly useful. That is one of the reasons why someone like me would pick up this particular lens. And the focusing is really fast as well. It's much faster than the kit lens that you would get. And so, yeah, this lens is really good for portraits as well as sports and i am actually going to be using this for sports i'm going to be using it for horse shows um so that's my primary use for this but it will also work for any other sports such as football basketball baseball anything like that really um you can get some nice sharp photos okay so but back to the aperture so the widest aperture you can get is 2.8 uh and the minimum aperture you can get is f22 um, and there is nine rounded aperture blades, which will make for some really, really nice, smooth, blurry, silky smooth, rather, uh, blurry background. So it's going to be a produce really, really incredible images. Um, now, as for the internal optics, uh, there are 22 elements in 17 groups. And as for the dimensions, um, the weights of this lens is quite heavy. Uh, it comes in at a pretty hefty three pounds. Uh, so it's really not something that you're gonna wanna use as a carry around lens, such as traveling and stuff like that, because you're gonna probably get tired while holding this. It also is eight inches long without the lens hood attached. So once you get the lens hood attached, let me go ahead and do that now. I'll go ahead and add the full length with the adapter as well. Let's get this on here. So there is what the lens looks like with the lens hood as well as the adapter. So it adds actually some significant length to the lens. Uh, so keep that in mind if you want to use the lens hood. But for most people, it's not going to be a big deal. And it also has the hypersonic motor for focusing, which is going to offer really, really quiet and quick focusing. And lastly, of the specs, um, it can focus as close to 4.6 feet away from your subject, which is not really that close considering some other lenses can get significantly closer than that, but it's not bad. Anyway, uh, so let's go ahead and compare it to a couple other lenses that I've got in my collection. So here's what it looks like next to the uh, Nikon 55 to 300 millimeter lens. As you can see, there is a quite significant size difference. So if we zoom this lens all the way to 300, uh, the length almost matches that of the 70 to 200 but the weight of this one is significantly less so i would recommend this one as a really good travel lens because it gives you a nice zoom range and focal length uh, but it does not have the hefty weight that this one does uh, and then the other lens that i've got here is the 18 to 140 kit lens um, as you can see 
dramatic difference in the size. This one is significantly smaller and a lot less um, heavy. So again, this would also be a really great travel lens. Um, uh, here's what it looks like zoomed all the way out on this one. Again, pretty close in length, but not too bad. But anyway, so that's what it looks like up against a couple of kit lenses that you might happen to find in your collection. So now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and mount this onto a camera and give you guys a what that looked like. So, like I said, I'm going to be primarily using this with my D5500. Uh, so let's go ahead and mount this on here. All right. And there you have it. So there is what it looks like mounted onto a DSLR. So pretty nice combination. Uh, the D5500 produces some really, really um, nice images. And pairing it with this particular lens is going to give you some really, really impressive photos. Um, like I said, I haven't really been able to test this lens yet because I just got it. Um, but make sure to stay tuned for some uh, videos captured with this lens. <clears throat> I'm going to be doing a low light test as well as a daylight test. And I am going to be putting um, some sample images at the end of this video if you guys want to check those out. Uh, so at the end of the video, uh, there will be some photos uh, taken using this lens. So you guys can get an idea of what the quality is going to be like. Hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button right down below. That's greatly appreciated. And hit that like button as well. That's also much appreciated. And if you guys have any questions, comments, anything along those lines, um, drop a comment below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. But anyway, so hope you guys have enjoyed this relatively long unboxing. Um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.